Good afternoon everyone. First and foremost, I would like to thank Department of Physics and respected teacher Dr. C. P. Sar, Namchi Government College and Sikkim University to provide me such a platform to make a video for partial fulfillment of B.Sc. Honours at 5th semester June to December 2020. My name is Fulkit Lepcha and my role number 18NS0026. So my topic is Lorentz Theory of Dispersion. So the introductions of Lorentz Theory of Dispersion. Hendrik Anton Lorentz was a Dutch physicist in 19th century, responsible for derivatives of electromagnetic Lorentz force and Lorentz transformation, later used by Einstein in the development of special relativity. Lorentz shared a Nobel Prize in 1902 with Peter Zimmern for the discovery of theoretical explanation of Zimmern effect that is splitting of spectral line when the static magnetic field is applied. H. A. Lorentz attempt to describe the interaction between atom and electric field in classical term. Lorentz proposed that the electrons are bound to the nucleus of atom by force that behaves like Hooke's law. Now the Lorentz theory of dispersion in theoretical model. Lorentz classical theory in the 1878 is based on classical theory of interaction between light and matter and used to describe frequency dependence polarization due to that bound electrons. Generally, there are two types of dispersion that is normal dispersion and anomalous dispersion. So, when refractive index decreases with increase in wavelength is known as normal dispersion. The first successful attempt to represent the curve for normal dispersion was given by Cauchy in 1836. Similarly, when refractive index increases with wavelength is known as anomalous dispersion. Now a plasma frequency. So what is plasma? So plasma plasma is an ionized electrically conducting gas of charged particles. So plasma exists naturally in universe which is known as ionosphere. It's range from 80 kilometers to approximately to 120 kilometers. Now, Lorentz dispersion model. So, when electron react to an electromagnetic field by vibrations like damp harmonic oscillator, the way dipole replies to a submitted electric field is given by following equations of motions of a bound electron. So, so here the figure shows that restoring force between orbiting electron and atomic center. So, here is the orbiting electrons and the atomic center that is nucleus. We know that a 
equations of motions of bound electron is given by m d square r vector dt plus of m gamma naught into dr dt plus of m into omega square t into r vectors equal to minus of e e vectors of low c so this is equation one where m d square r vector dt is the acceleration force m into gamma naught dr vector dt is the viscous force m into omega square t r vector is the hooks force and minus e of e l o c e vector is the electric sorry local electric field by driving force and m is the electronic mass e is the magnitude of electric charge now solution of equation 1 yield this expression for the amplitude of oscillator gamma naught depending on the photon of energy that is omega so equation 1 becomes r vectors of omega equal to 1 by m into local electric field driving by force by bracket open resonant frequency minus natural frequency bracket close plus of i gamma naught of omega so this is equation 2 so the induce dipole moment mu is related to r that is displacement of electrons is given through equation 2 that is mu 
वेक्टर फंक्शंस ऑफ ओमेगा इक्वल टू माइनस ऑफ ई आर वेक्टर्स ऑफ ओमेगा नाउ पुटिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ आर वेक्टर ओमेगा from equation 2 so this is equation 3 putting the value of r vectors omega in equation 3 we get mu of omega equal to e square e vectors of loc by m into omega square t minus of omega square plus of i gamma naught of omega so this is equation 4 therefore equation 4 is the induced dipole moment Now the polarization alpha of omega is given by the following relation. that is mu of omega equal to alpha of omega into e of omega this is equation 5 where alpha is the polarization Therefore, equation 5 becomes alpha of omega equals to e square by m into 1 by omega square t minus of omega square plus of I gamma naught of omega. Therefore, equation five becomes alpha of omega equals to e square by m into 1 by omega square t minus of omega square plus of i gamma naught of omega since mu of omega equal to e square by m into 1 by omega square t minus of omega square plus of i gamma naught of omega so we are considering this is equation 6 now in a vacuum
taking the sum of single dipole moment then we get the polarization per unit value from the following equation that is p functions of omega equal to n into alpha functions of omega into dialectic function equal to epsilon not chi of omega into dialectic functions so this is equation 7 where chi of functions of omega equal to electric susceptibility and E of omega equal to dielectric function from equation 7 the electric susceptibility curve functions of omega is chi functions of omega equal to n into e square by epsilon naught into m into 1 by omega square t minus of omega square plus of i gamma naught of omega so this is equation set it where n into e square by epsilon naught into m equal to plasma frequency square that is omega square subscript p therefore omega square p equal to n into e square by epsilon naught into m then the dielectric function is given by following relation that is dielectric functions of omega equal to 1 plus chi functions of omega so this is equation 9 putting the value of lactic susceptibility in equation 9 
we get dialectic functions of omega equal to 1 plus n e square by epsilon naught into m into 1 by omega square t minus of omega square plus of i gamma naught omega so this is equation 10 so dialectic constant equal to 1 plus omega square p by omega square t minus of omega square plus of i gamma naught into omega so this is equation 11 where omega square p equal to n e square by epsilon naught into m so by using limits e as n e infinite of the dielectric function at low and high frequency is given by at low frequency static dialectic constant equal to e of omega tends to zero so the equation become static dialectic constant equal to one plus omega square p by omega square t so this is equation 12 similarly at a high frequency frequency infinite dialectic constant e of omega tends to 1 so the equation becomes c infinite equal to 1 so this is equation 13 now for a complex dielectric function can be expressed in term of constant E S N E infinite by substituting equation twelve and thirteen in equation eleven. So we get dialectic constant equal to 
e infinite plus of e as minus e infinite into omega square t by omega square t minus of omega square plus of i gamma naught into omega so this is equation 14 where static dialectic constant equal to infinite dialectic constant plus of omega square p by omega square t since omega square p equal to es minus e infinite into omega square t so from above equation Lorentz model describe radiation and absorption due to interband transaction so the significance of frequency at low frequency the amplitude r has a medium infinite value and it is in phase with e at the resonance frequency the amplitude is imaginary and maximum when denominator is minimum at high frequency the amplitude r vanishes so what will be the magnetic field contribution to the Lorentz model? The classical Lorentz model of dielectric dispersion is based on the microscopic Lorentz force relations and Newton's second law of motions for a symbol of harmonically bound electron. The magnetic field contribution in the Lorentz force relation is neglected because it is typically small in comparison with electric field contribution. Inclusion of this term leads to microscopic polarization density that contain both perpendicular and parallel component relatives to the plane wave propagation vectors. The modified parallel and perpendicular polarizations are both non-linear in the local electric field strain. So, the magnetic field contribution is neglected in Lorentz relation because it is small in comparison with electric field contribution.